When I was younger, I would do this a lot. I would cut faces or pictures out of books and I would tape them to sticks. Set them up in my room and shine lights at them so that when I turned my own lights off, they were reflected in my windows. I was trying to get over being scared of this idea of this presence in my window. I wouldn't say that that actually helped, but it was sort of exhilarating, it was sort of fun. And it was the beginning of a process, I think, that maybe is helping me. The voyeur in my work is not supposed to be like a scary or threatening presence in the way that I feel like it's often portrayed in movies and novels. It's maybe somebody that feels just outside the equation. The voyeur is like actually what I am in the process. So I was driving out to Long Island each day to work on these sculptures. And the den in my parents' house on Long Island. They gave me like half of the room and the rest of it was everything else that was in the room pushed over. The sculpture's very much based on Long Island and my, my growing up there and my feelings of growing up there and the specific kind of aloneness that I felt there. Part of my fantasy about this place was that I was gonna, I was gonna be able to like stay up all night working in here and like be alone. But then like my parents are sleeping, and like I can't even like drill into the wood. Realizing that this fantasy of solitude <laughs> is just like not even real. The night pictures, they're sort of a sequential set of images that are of plaster reliefs on wood. They are different from other pieces in, in that they've really accepted the fact that they're on the picture plane. It's using a rectangular form to say the same thing that I often try to say with a sculpture on the floor. What people deem to be creepy, categorized as horror. That's sort of the language or like the genre I think that I'm working within is horror. The thing that I'm emphasizing within that is desire for comfort or a need for comfort or even the ability of horror to comfort. Before I was even making sculptures or anything, a close friend of mine died in a fire. I sort of built up this, this leg that I made to look as if it was burnt. I kept coating it and coating it until it became like the flesh of a normal leg. And that was the beginning of me making these more figurative sculptures. There's definitely fear involved. There's a sort of pain to that, but it's uh, more helpful than just sitting with my own thoughts. I think it's important to do something with my hands. There's certain body parts that in, in each sculpture that I'll cast. Cast my hands, my feet, my knees, my nipples. Those are the things that 
give more a sense of reality to these things. It lets everything else sort of fade and break down at points. The big mission of mine is reevaluating maleness and masculinity. The ability of a man to bury their own emotions to a point where they can't even find them again is like unparalleled. The headlessness is because of the head just being totally inverted. It's absolutely just down inside the body. It feels like really emasculating in this really great way to me. Like it's just, it's a kind of self-reflection. I am, I am very anxious. I am scared. Um, I am sad. But here are these moments where, like, if I can look at that, like, at face value, see these things, maybe it's fine to be scared or sad or anxious. It's not such a threat or something. It's, it's just normal. <laughs>